Hi Floss Tube! It's Michelle, Farm Girl. Uh, welcome to my kitchen. I bet you're wondering what we're doing here. Uh, I smell a tutorial. I posted yesterday on Stitch Mania um, some fabric that I had dyed and had several requests for a tutorial, so I thought I'd accommodate that. So here's the fabric that I posted. It does look a little bit different than what showed up. Um, so this is the fabric that I'm going to be using for Sleepy Hollow, which I don't think I actually said the name of um, the pattern when I did my last video. Um, so it's Sleepy Hollow by Glendon Place, and this is the fabric that I dyed. Um, it's, it's showing pretty true to color, I guess. It's kind of black with a little bit of purple and some green. The green is a little more like acidy green, but yeah, it's showing up pretty. Before people um, had asked if I have a tutorial, if I would do a tutorial, and so that's what I'm going to do today. Um, so to start out with, what you're going to need is some gloves. Um, these are latex gloves. They're just blue because they're my milking gloves. Um, you will need, obviously, your fabric, and you do want a pile here of kind of sloppy wet um, fabric. You do want to, um, I don't know if you have to, but I always do rinse the sizing out. I also serge the edges because if you don't, you will get a mess of string. Uh, don't ask me how I know. You will need of containers here. Um, you can use non-porous or plastic. There's some glass pie plates in here. Those are non-porous, so they should be okay to use. I like to use freezer paper because the wax side um, makes it waterproof and I use that just to cover my surfaces. This will stain your countertop, so if you have granite, you probably don't want to do this. We have just an inexpensive um, um, laminate countertop, so I'm not real worried about it. I'm kind of hoping that I make a disaster and I can get them replaced anyway. So, And you will need a bunch of measuring cups. Um, spoon or something to mix and then I have my box of dyes. Now, RIT has on their website so these and I would recommend the liquid dyes. I would not do the powdered. The reason being I used to do a lot of dyeing and I actually used um, I did craft shows and I made a lot of baby products and I used to dye a lot of the fabrics like onesies and clothing and things and um, put little decals and stuff on them and the one thing I will say, even like with the aqua blue, there's red in that and it's almost impossible to dissolve. And I have, was never really, very few times was I able to actually dye a piece of fabric and not have a tinge of pink or something somewhere. So I just really like, and unless you're going to be doing like a ton of dyeing, I mean, I just don't think it's as economical. These are much easier to use. They're pre-mixed. Um, they will not give you the little imperfections unless you don't care about those then go ahead and use the powdered um but these are much much easier and quicker to use um and your time is valuable so okay and trying to think obviously your fabric uh, you want to um wear yucky old clothing i have yucky farm clothes on that I'm not worried about splashing or spilling. Um, some extra towels, gloves, we have run over that, and um, sink, so you're gonna wanna rinse your fabric and, and rinse out your fabric and, um, and let me just turn the camera around and we'll get started. Okay, I'm back and ready, and I have a piece of um, 14 count Ada here, and that's what we're gonna start with. And I'm gonna start with more of a tone on tone, and you can you can do this with either the same color, or you can mix color. And these are the two colors that I have. These are both Rit dyes. One is an aquamarine, and one is a royal blue. We're gonna do a base coat of the aquamarine, and um, I do not measure. I just kind of guess. I mean, you do um, have to be comfortable with a little bit of science, I guess, and experimenting. And the more you do it, you're gonna have some fails, and that's okay. And um, you just need to remember that and learn from it, take notes. Um, but like I said, you just need a basic knowledge of color. So I'm using a half a teaspoon to a cup of warm water, and I'm going to look at that. And the one thing I will do, 
and I'm gonna grab a plate. I'm sorry, I have this um, on the cabinet, so it's gonna move a little bit. Okay, the one thing I do like to do is I like to keep um, just a white dinner plate. Um, if you know me, one of the things you'll find out about me is I'm obsessed with um, dinnerware, and I have several sets of white <laughs> dinnerware. Uh, what I will do is I just kind of test it by putting it on a white surface and just kind of test uh, the saturation of the color, and that's pretty good. Now, if you didn't want quite that blue, and we can lighten it up a little bit, um, I'm going to pour half in here to another measuring cup, and I'm going to add a little bit of water, and I have a four cup measuring cup here with water. Sorry, I'm going to try and keep everything on screen, but Okay, and so now you can see the difference. Here's our original dollop, and here's our new one. Now you might not be able to see that on camera as much, but I can tell the difference. And what we're going to do then, the smaller the fabric, the smaller container you can use. Now I'm gonna just do a complete solid color. So I'm just gonna stick this in a bowl, and I'm gonna pour this over. Okay, so that's a little bit on the light side. So what I'm going to do is pour this back in. And like I said, this is a lot of trial and error. I'm going to pour this back in and I'm going to add another half a teaspoon or so. Okay, and I'm just going to dip a little bit of corner in here and kind of test it out. Okay, and that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and pour that over. The nice thing about these mixes is that you don't have to mix them as well because they're already a concentrate and they're already dissolved. The powder mixes are, oh, they're, they're a pain if you ask me. Um, I had tried using a blender stick. I tried everything and nothing seemed to work. Okay, so I don't need to be too concerned with that. I just don't want any white spots. So I'm going to just wring that out. And I'm going to pour this back. This is why it's important to cover your surface. I'm going to pour that back into the measuring cup. Okay, and you can see pretty solid color saturation here. Um, and now I'm going to put it into a smaller container and I'm just going to, this wax surface, by the way, this is freezer paper with the wax surface up which makes it waterproof. So I'm just gonna kind of bunch it like this. I'm just kinda, and you do want it flat. You don't want to like fold under. I mean, for certain techniques you may want to, but for this, I don't. I just wanna kind of bunch it And I'm going to put it in the container, get everything in there kind of even, Steven. Okay, and it's it's packed in there pretty firmly. Um, now, this technique should give you a lot of um, variegation and a lot of clearly defined variegation. So I'm going to take the royal blue now, and I'm going to add a half a teaspoon to this half a cup. Okay, and I'm going to test it on here. Okay, and that's that looks pretty good. I'm going to try a little bit on the fabric first and see what I think. And I'm just going to start by doing like right on the edge. You can see I have a corner piece here. Okay, and I'm liking that. I'm honestly, I'm probably never going to use this fabric. These aren't really my colors, but um, the tighter the fabric, the less likely your dye is going to reach the center. Um, it's going to tend to cover the surface areas and not get into these creases and crevices. So what we want to do is not saturate the whole thing, but just pour it over. Some of it will wick down because it's wet. 
And it's just practice and trial and error on how much, how much to put on and when. And don't be intimidated. Buy some inexpensive fabric and give it a try and see what you think. Okay, and you can leave this sit for 30 minutes or so, um, and you can see in my container, I'm going to actually add just a little bit more, and use the bottom of your container and the sides to kind of tell how much is passing through. And you don't, what you don't want is it really puddling up at the bottom a lot um, so that your fabric is sitting in a pool. Okay, and make sure that you're recapping these as you go because if you spill, it's a bummer. Okay, so you can leave this sit. Um, I, the dyes aren't like coffee, like they, they don't rinse out. This is permanent. So that's one thing that you have to consider when, um, when you're using fabric dyes is um, you have to be committed to the process. So I'm gonna put you on pause and I'm gonna rinse this and we'll see what we get. Okay, so here, um, this is completely rinsed until no color came through and you can see um, the variegation that we got. Now it's, you can see that it's um, where it sat on the top of the fabric and that it didn't bleed into the pieces that are in the bottom. The more you pour on top, the more this is going to saturate. Um, you can dr also dry in between, and that will give you a different look. Um, I'm actually going to, this is still wet. I just rinsed it. I'm going to go dry it, and then we're going to take a peek at what it's going to look like dry, because it is going to lighten up quite a bit. Okay, and you can see, here's our piece of fabric now, all dry. Um, you can see it's considerably lighter. Um, you can definitely make out the teal and the royal blue but it's it's very pretty and it's a subtle modeling and that's um you know that has a lot to do with the amount of pigment that i put into the water if you want something um more saturated then you just add more dye but i you know me i like subtle and but this is i think this is really pretty so i want to take another piece um, I have two pieces of Ada. Here's the other one, and we're going to prim this one by doing tan with a brown overlay. Um, and I'm going to make it a little bit more um, of an effect, not such a subtle modeling. So we're going to start here, and I'm actually going to go rinse out my jars um, so we can start clean. Okay, so everything is clean, and I'm going to start with taking my warm water and filling these. About a half cup in that one, and we'll do a cup in this one. And this time I'm using um, Rit Tan and the Dark Brown. And I'm going to start... Now this one I'm going to be a little bit more generous. And I have actually used almost this whole bottle. I've used um, it quite a few times dying. And I'm going to use my cup because I'm going to do the same process where I'm going to do a base coat. And so I'm going to start with a full teaspoon here. Okay, crisis averted. You'll see I got a little blue drop on there because I did not rinse my plate. But we're going to start and just give this a little drop test. And I definitely want that darker. So I'm gonna add another teaspoon. And Ada, um, I will say this from my experience dyeing linen and Ada, that the Ada dyes lighter. Okay, I'm gonna try that. And you have to remember that this is tan, so it's not gonna get brown. Okay, but that's, that's good. So I'm just going to, I'm not gonna worry about wadding it up, because oops. still had a little bit of blue um because I'm just doing a solid base coat really so I'm just gonna pour that in and I made this one a little darker just because um I now understand that Ada dies a little lighter and actually a lot more color seems to rinse out um of the Ada than the linen when I've dyed that okay so just gonna wring that out
Okay, and I'm gonna pour that back in here. And I'm probably just gonna use um, this. And I don't care about those drops there, so. Okay, so this is our base coat so far, very pretty. Now keep in mind that this is gonna dry lighter. Um, I am actually going to, I'm gonna dump about half of this. I'm going to do the same technique where I just bunch it. This is a small piece of fabric, so you wanna make sure that you don't have any large ends, otherwise you're gonna have big spots. And if that doesn't bother you, and it, you know that can look really pretty too. I'm gonna stick that back in the container. Just make sure it's kind of even in there. And actually, I can feel that there's like one big raised bump here. Um, and I think I'm gonna make that a little bit, pour a little bit more color on there and um, see what we get. Okay, I'm gonna put tops on and give that a little shake. Now, this is a dark brown, so I'm going to actually start out with a quarter teaspoon. With a quarter teaspoon. And I do have more water here in case I need it. And you can see I think that's going to be perfect. Maybe just a little bit more. I do want this a bit, quite a bit darker. So I'm not gonna do a whole quarter teaspoon, maybe. Okay, I feel like that's pretty good. I'm gonna set that aside. And I'm gonna use a tablespoon. I'm gonna put a big old tablespoon right on this big kind of bumpy area here. Okay, just what I don't want is a lot sitting at the bottom and I'm getting some at the bottom. So, and I do want to just hit this corner a little bit. Okay. And now I'm gonna um, clean this up, give this a few minutes to sit and I'll be right back. Okay, so here is our piece of Ada. It's still wet. Ah! Um. If you think it's too dark, which I don't, I really like this, um, but you can run it under hot water and I'll take a lot of that out. And I'm actually gonna, I must have touched something and touched that because I don't have tops on anything. Um, but in the interest of comparison, I have already base dyed a piece of linen and you can even see how just the tan, I used the same, it was like two teaspoons per cup of water. And you can see how the linen really absorbs the dye color. Um, this was a white piece, just like the Ada was. Um, and actually, I don't know if I've rinsed that or not. So um, I'm gonna dry this and I'll be back. Okay, now this piece of linen, I'm using the exact same technique, the same exact same colors, but you can see this piece of linen um, would be pretty tough to shove in there. And then I would get a lot of busyness, which is not necessarily what I want. So I've got, um, and you can see I'm just bunching up the fabric and I'm going to put it in a little bit bigger bowl here and I'm just gonna spread it out evenly here. Okay, and I've got my um, dye mixed here. I'm just gonna see, I've got my plate. I'm just gonna take a peek and see. So I think I want, I'm gonna try a little test spot here. And I think I actually want it a little darker, that dark. I did start with the tan so that it's a little bit more tone on tone. Okay, and I think that's gonna be good. And I'm gonna use, I like using the tablespoon and you can see the bottom of the bowl here. Um, I, that's why I like these plastic containers because you can really tell how much you're putting in. And I'm just going to sprinkle it over. Oh, and I really like that. This is going to be very prim. It's going to be pretty. 
Okay, I'm gonna let that sit for a minute. I'm gonna rinse it and then I'm going to um, clean up this mess a little bit and I will dry both of them and then we'll um, compare. Okay, so I'm back. I've dried both the fabrics. Here's the Ada. Um, it's, it's a little tiny bit damp, but it's mostly dry. And you can see, um, now I did, what I did realize is that if I rinse, definitely more color rinses out of the Ada than the linen. Um, and I rinsed it in warm water. And I think if you rinse it in cold, you would get less color coming out. But I think this is beautiful. This is like perfect for a prim um, stitch piece. And this is lovely. What I have found with doing the walnut dye and the coffee, I really like having the fabric washed. Um, coffee in particular is full of acid. Um, I mean, and not that anything that I'm stitching on those is super, you know, it's going to be like an heirloom piece, but um, still, I just prefer um, that it doesn't have it in it. And if you if you rinse it or wash it, it does seem to rinse out. Even if I heat set it, it just, it does rinse out. So um, this is permanent. This is not coming out anymore. Like I said, this was actually part of, this was rinsed in very, very warm water. So um, that's how that one looks. Um, the linen is completely gorgeous. I really like the way this turned out. It definitely um, soaks up a lot more of the dye and less rinses out for sure. Here's the other side. And this is dry. I mean, a little tech, little bit damp, but mostly dry. Dampen this under the sink again. And then I'm going to, um, actually I have some water right here. And I'm just going to use that because that's fine. And you can see when I wring that out, like no... No dye comes out of that. Okay, so I've got it damp again. And I'm just going to use this bowl because it's sitting in front of me. And yes, this is a vintage Pyrex bowl. Um, I'm going to do much like I did before and wad it up. Okay, and so here's how it looks. I'm going to test that on the corner again. Okay, I think that's about what I'm looking for. Okay, I think that's going to be perfect. So now I'm going to take my tablespoon and I'm just going to sprinkle it randomly. I still want to see a lot of the tan and I do want um, the brown to show through as well but I just want this kind of black brown to be in there. That seems a little bit darker yet. And that's it. Okay, and I think that's gonna be good. Okay, that simple. I'm going to, um, and you can see, you can still see the tan. I pull it out. This is what it's going to look like, okay? And I'm just going to rinse it under the sink, and I'll be right back. So here is our finished piece of Ada, and I did, I had to put this stuff away because I touched it here with, um, but that's okay, it adds to the it's a very primitive nature. I could even go back in because there are, I would like some larger spots almost of even darker areas, um, so you could even go in and hand paint. And this is Joblin. Yes. So this is Joblin. This is um, a Wichelt Joblin on clearance at um, Hobby Lobby. What a bummer. Okay. And what we're going to do with that one, I'm going to um, show you how I did this one. Now I did um, go back after I did the dyeing because I wanted to darken it up and I added, I kind of, dyed the whole thing again with black because um, it was very purple but I think um, this time I'm going to do actually let's start with I want to do an orange base so I'm going to do this with um, larger spots of orange and then I'm going to overlay it with some black and so what I'm going to and I've never done this before so 
you're just doing it with me. So I'm going to start because my base color is going to be orange and it's going to be kind of a dirty orange. And then I'm going to go over it with a black and this is going to be some um, dark 13 stitching projects. Okay, so I don't have orange, but I do have yellow and red. Um, yellow needs to be shaken up very well. And I'm looking for a jack-o'-lantern orange, which I'm going to add a little bit of brown to, um, to grunge it up a bit. So I'm going to start, sorry about the goats there. They, I bet they can hear me and they think it's close to milking time. I'm going to start with about a tablespoon or a teaspoon and a half. Get my trusty plate out here. And I think I'm going to do, you have to do have to use a lot of yellow. Okay, so I'm going to actually, so that was about probably two and a quarter teaspoons for a cup of warm water. And that's a good, a good lemon yellow. And now this is a cherry red. And this is how we're going to make orange. And I'm only going to use, this is a teaspoon, and I'm going to use about a quarter. And we should get a perfect. There, Like I said, there are directions on RIT um, on their website to look the exact color that you want. Is that looking orangey? That's pretty orange. And I'm actually going to test it on a corner here and see what it looks like. Perfect. Can you see that? So remember to put the top back on. Okay, now I'm going to take my dark brown. And because this is dark brown, you want to make sure that you're conservative. You can always add more, but you can't take away. And I'm just going to probably add a couple drops. Duke? Duke, come here. Come on. <laughs> Did you hear him try and creep up the stairs, naughty little boy? Okay, test that out. Now see that kind of richens the color a bit. So that looks pretty good. This is how I mix my colors. I tend not to look on the RIT website, but okay, so see that's a bright and that's pretty that's pretty good. Okay, so we're again we're just gonna dye the whole thing. So I'm just gonna stick it in here and I'm gonna pour this over. Okay, now this, I believe I said, this is Joblin. Why don't we do a linen side by side? And see what we get. Oops, not flick. Okay, so here is um, a 32 count linen, and we're just going to dip that in there as well. Well, let's see if I believe it's, um, it, they don't take it. Joblin absorbs the red. It doesn't absorb blues. Maybe that's what it is. Or when you try and dye blues, it only absorbs like purples and it'll only absorb the reds out of it. I don't know. I do recall though that, um, and you can see this is dying actually a little bit lighter and this is definitely more an intense color than what's in the linen and I just want to I'm not really too concerned that this is um, super even because I'm going to be over dyeing it. I'm just going to wring it out. Okay and then I'm going to get rid of this and we're going to be using um, gray and black next. Okay so I have three quarter cups here of hot water. I'll put these away. And I'm going to take a half, a half a teaspoon of black. I'm 
going to be doing them identical. So let's see how dark that is. That I might do just a quarter teaspoon or a little bit more. Okay, I think actually that's going to be good, and I'm not. I'm just going to skip the gray. I am going to add just a titch. Well, let's see here. And I'm going to test a corner here and see what what it looks like. I think that'll be good. Put that away because that would be a nightmare if it spilled. Put this to the side here. And get my handy dandy, here's one I've been using. And this is the Joblin. Okay, and I'm gonna do my same, and I don't really care that that's getting on there. Like I said, I like the primitive stuff, so the more blotching stuff, the better. Okay, and I'm just gonna bunch it up in there like that. I'm going to take my tablespoon and go for it. Okay, I'm not going to do too much. I'm just going to check and see. Okay, that's pretty much going through. So I'm going to leave that. The linen will try a different technique. Let's try painting. Um, because you can do that too. Now Suzette shows, um, the Primitive Stitcher um, shows doing this with some walnut crystals and you can do the same thing with the die. You can drip. Your chickens in my bushes. All right. I think that looks pretty fancy. Okay, I'm going to rinse um, and repeat. Okay, now those um, I am preparing to dye, but the sun or preparing to dry, but the sun is going down, so I wanted to make sure. We got to the next one. This is a um, piece of linen, and I'm going to show you what I did um, to get this, and we're going to use three colors this time. The first thing I'm going to do, now this one, I'm just bunching. And I'm going to, oh, excuse you, Dookie. Sorry if you heard that. <laughs> I love puppies. Okay, so we're just going to bunch and set that aside for now. And we want to give this one um, a little bit of room because we're gonna be using three colors. Um, and it probably actually wouldn't hurt to use a glass pan so you can see the bottom and see how much is um, working its way through. I find um, not being a um, super skilled dyer that that's really helpful, is being able to see how much you're putting in. Okay, we're going to set that aside for now. We're going to mix our colors. So I do still have the black. Let me keep that. I'm going to mix a cup of warm water. And I actually do have a purple dye, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. Otherwise, you can just use red and blue. And for the type of blue, I would use um, a half a teaspoon of red. And, and then you can either use a half a teaspoon of the royal blue and see what that gives you, or um, the aquamarine would be fine as well. Okay, so we're going to start with a half a teaspoon because this is a pretty dark color. This is um, like a straight up purple, so you can see that's pretty dark. Okay, and actually I'm going to put in at least another half a teaspoon. OK, 
Okay, and we'll see if that darkened it up. And maybe actually just another half a teaspoon. Generous half teaspoon. Okay, I'm gonna actually do one more. So all together, that was probably close to three teaspoons. And I've got a cup of water in here. Okay, that's, that's good. I'm gonna rinse this off. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start with this just so we can get these colors out of the way so we don't get them confused. Our primary color is going to be this purple. And you can see that's a pretty bright purple. Okay, now I'm intentionally leaving some high spots and leaving white spots. Not big, huge ones, but okay. And the nice thing about this is we can kind of see, um, and it is running through to the bottom. I can't really show you, but um, it is definitely, there's a, a bit, just a little bit of pooling at the bottom. That's exactly what we want. So we're going to set this aside. And we're going to take our water and about a half a cup of water. Okay, and now I don't have green, so I'm going to mix it myself. And I want a um, kind of a vile, bright, Halloween-y, electric green. So I've got a half a cup of water. I'm going to start with, oops, wrong color. Woo, that is not yellow. Learn your colors, Michelle, learn your colors. Okay, here's yellow. Okay, big teaspoon of yellow. We want this pretty bright. That's good. I might just add another half teaspoon there. Not quite half teaspoon. Okay, that should be good. And now we are going to go with the, um, this is an aquamarine blue, and we're going to add it just a little bit at a time until we get the right color. So I'm going to start with just about a half you can see how fast that darkens up, so that's why you want to do it gradually. Bring my, the plate over here, and you can see this is a definite, and that's actually perfect. Like bile green. Okay, sorry, I forgot to turn the camera. Okay, so now we have um, our black dye, purple, and our electric green. And I have the purple in here. This is a little bright for me, to be honest. I want it more, a little darker. But um, what I'm probably going to end up doing is kind of over dyeing it once it's all done. I'm going to take the green and I'm just going to hit some of these high areas. These white areas. This is a corner, so it doesn't really matter to me too much, but. Okay, a little bit. I don't want that super, super vibrant green. I just want a hint of it. All right, we're gonna rinse this. Okay, so this is what it turned out like, and obviously this is too light because we are looking for definitely something more moody. I mean, I am looking for something more moody for sure. Um, so I'm gonna put that back. And I'm actually, so this is my black. And I think I'm going to add a little royal sky color. And we'll see what that does. 
So, and I'm adding this to my, if we look, you can kind of see that this is actually pretty diluted. Um, but it's a black base. And I'm going to add about three quarters of a teaspoon. And I've got three fourths of a cup of water here. Okay. Let's see what that does. We're going to tone that purple down just a bit. Actually, these. Should probably could have gone a little bit darker. Problem is, when you go too light, you tend to add more of the mixture and that just kind of dilutes and muddies everything but this is kind of cool so we'll see what we get and actually if i'm pouring blue over that lime green it'll get rid of the limey green it'll be more of a probably turn into more of a forest green okay and i'm going to rinse that and we'll see what we get Okay, so not exactly what I was going for, but all hope is not lost. I'll just show you. I don't care that this dye is here, really. Um, so it's looking a little rainbow bright to me. Um, but this is okay. We're still going to work with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it. Don't panic. Put it back in here. This actually happened with me to the with the first one I did. Okay, and I'm going to dump this here I have a little bit more water here and I'm gonna go back to gray and black okay so I'm using the pearl gray I'm actually gonna do quite a bit of that and I don't care that that blue is in there so this is about three fourths of a teaspoon or a tablespoon okay that's a pretty pretty gray I just want to darken it up a bit um, so I want to add a little bit of black um, about a quarter about uh, between a quarter and a half a teaspoon Okay, I'm going to use my plate. That's pretty good. And I'm just going to tone that down. That actually still might not be enough pigment. About another half a teaspoon of black. And I'm going to come back and just hit it with this green. Just a titch. Okay, that's looking pretty dark and moody. I think that's closer to what we want. And I'll rinse it. Okay, I'm going to try this again because the color is really terrible. So here is, um, this is the Joe Blinn. This is better. Um, the color is much better now. Um, this is the orange over dyed with the black in the Joe Blinn. This is the orange over dyed with the black. And I actually added some purple because... The, um, the orange was not really orange. So I dye, I added the purple to kind of darken it up. And that seemed to really help. So you can kind of, you can see the little specks of purple. But here are the two. So it does absorb the color a bit differently. I mean, this one's definitely darker. 
and the Adas that we did. So here is the, um, this was the aquamarine blue over dyed with royal blue. Very pretty. And this was the um, tan over dyed with brown on the Ada. Very nice. Let me see. That helps at all. And then this was the tan um, over dyed with brown on linen. I love this. So pretty. All right. And this was the biggest surprise to me. So this is the purple, black, and green, and this is Joblin. And you can see the Joblin. I actually attempted two times to over dye this in black, and it really doesn't pick up black very well. And you can see here how much darker. So quite a contrast. So that was kind of a fun experiment. Same colors. Yeah, just picked it up really differently. So that's that. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, please let me know what you think. If you, um, I encourage you all to try it because it's not that hard. And I know everything that I'm use, doing is kind of dark and dreary, but I needed some kind of October type Halloween fabric. So that's kind of what I was going for. Um, you can use this technique with any of any colors. Um, so if you want something for a mirror that's brighter, try it. Uh, I'm not certainly not a professional. This is just probably my fifth attempt at dyeing fabric. So I'm certainly not an expert. Um, but this is how I do it. Uh, take it or leave it. But have fun with it. And I would love to see your fabrics on Stitch Mania or tag me on Instagram. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram at Rudy Ranch, R-U-E-D-Y Ranch. Um, yeah, because I would really love to see it. So hope you enjoyed. And then I'll, tomorrow I'll be back with my um, Stitch Mania update. Thanks. Bye.